Ah yes, Jaws. One of my favorite movies of all time, and in my opinion, the best shark movie of all time. Jaws was a monumental success when it came out, which meant, of course, that there was bound to be a bunch of terrible sequels so that the studio could cash in on the popularity of the brand. Jaws 2 wasn't a great movie, but I think it was easily the best out of the sequels. Jaws 3 had special effects in it that were so bad that they were hilarious, unintentionally. And finally, Jaws the Revenge. The funny thing about this movie is that it actually kind of negates some of the developments that Jaws 3 made. Universal Pictures even referred to Jaws the Revenge as the third movie in the trilogy. It's almost like they want to forget that Jaws 3 even happened in the first place. Which is kind of funny because I bet after this movie was released, they wanted to forget that one too. But you know what, who cares? It's all garbage anyways. That's what we do here on Bad Movies. I watch and analyze pure trash for your enjoyment. I mean, how, how twisted is that? And I'm the one who came up with the idea. So what the f*** is wrong with me? Now the story of Jaws the Revenge once again revolves around the Brody family, who are still living on Amity Island, by the way, which I find strange because your family has encountered shark attacks multiple times now. I mean, okay, fine, the first time, you know, freak occurrence, tragedies happen, let's get on with our lives, whatever. But after the second time, I'd probably be like, all right, everybody pack your bags, we're f***ing moving. That or we're just gonna get a pool. Now the tagline for Jaws the Revenge is, this time it's personal. And that's because the idea is that the shark is going after the Brody family for revenge. Revenge for what? I guess the shark is a blood relative or close friend of all of the other sharks from the franchise. And not only that, but somehow it knows that the Brody family are the ones resp- You know what? I, I'm not even gonna finish this train of thought. I think you all know where I'm going with this. It, it's, it's ridiculous and quite frankly, holy shit, somebody got paid to write that. So the movie starts with Ellen Brody and she's living with her son Sean and he's a police deputy and one night he has to go out and clear a log from a channel marker. So he goes out on the boat. Now I bet you'd be willing to guess what happens next. And you'd be right, Sean is attacked by a shark, of course. It's just too bad that we don't really get to see anything. It's just shots of water and blood, and then a jacket, and then water again. And this is all just cut together in a complete mess of a sequence. So I guess the shark bit off Sean's arm and he's screaming for help now, but nobody can hear him because they're too busy singing Christmas carols. See, now this is yet another reason why Christmas caroling is extremely dangerous. You carolers just cost this man his life. How do you feel about that? Sean gets eaten by the shark and this leads Ellen to believe the shark came for him specifically. Hey, here's an idea. Move to a place where there aren't any sharks. I mean, these places exist. I, for one, live in an area where there aren't any shark attacks. In fact, I've, I don't remember ever hearing about a shark attack that happened in all of Canada. I guess there's just some countries where you have to worry about these kinds of things more than others. I mean, it's uh, to me, it seems like Australia, that's just a country where everything wants to kill you. I don't know, maybe you Australian fans can enlighten me a bit, but holy shit. There's a spiders and scorpions and snakes. I mean, in Canada, I just don't feel that there's that many vicious animals to worry about. I mean, what, we got to uh, worry about bears, Bigfoot, and I want to say yetis? And all of our most annoying creatures, we just kind of ship off to the US. Sorry, guys. But to be fair, you guys have gotten some of our most awesome people as well, so... To me, it's a fair balance. Anyways, Ellen's telling everybody, oh, the shark waited for Sean, you know? This is all premeditated murder. Yes, I'm sure that's it. The sharks all got together at one point and said, all right, guys, you know what? This Brody family has been throwing a wrench in our people-eating plans for far too long. We gotta figure something out here. It's, it's time for revenge. All right, so let's, let's go around the table, gather some ideas. Jim, you gonna come up with an idea this time? Or are you just gonna sit there munching on coral, like usual? Then we have this scene between Sean's brother Mike and his wife, and I gotta say, this scene is so weird. 
Uh, they're talking about Sean, and then mid-sentence, Mike just starts running away. And you might be wondering where he's going. That's a very good question. So where are you going? Nowhere! So after the funeral, Mike convinces Ellen to come with them to the Bahamas because, you know, forget all that grieving stuff. And get this, the shark actually follows them to the Bahamas. In the Bahamas, Michael Caine shows up and takes Ellen on a plane ride and then decides to freak her out when he just lets go of the controls. Because this is exactly the type of stuff you want to do to someone who's mourning the loss of their son. Meanwhile, Mike, who is a marine biologist, by the way, is working with his partners when all of a sudden Jaws 4 shows up and starts chewing on his boat a bit. I'm just gonna say I think all of the scenes that don't involve the shark are incredibly boring. For example, this scene between Mike and his wife is just unbelievably terrible. It's basically just a fight over taking out the garbage until it gets to this. I've always wanted to make love to an angry welder. I've dreamed of nothing else since I was a small boy. Yes, he dreamed of making love to an angry welder ever since he was a young boy. I mean, to each his own, but when I was growing up, I don't remember seeing someone dressed like this and thinking to myself, oh yeah, that's hot. So Mike goes underwater to do something and Jaws 4 starts chasing him. He swims into this old ship wreckage and the shark actually follows him and manages to pretty much corner him at one point. So Mike uses his oxygen tank to shoot back up to the surface. Now, I'm not a marine biologist, but wouldn't surfacing that quickly cause a bad case of decompression sickness, also known as the bends? Meanwhile, Mike's daughter goes on a banana boat, Jaws 4 shows up and just misses her but he gets to eat this nice lady instead. So now Ellen's really pissed. She's gonna go confront this thing once and for all. I gotta ask, what's the plan here? You're just gonna sail out into the ocean, find the shark, let it eat you, and hope that this will satisfy it and save the rest of your family? As if the shark's just gonna say, okay, you know, we're cool now. Luckily, Michael Caine flies Jake and Mike to the boat just in time as Jaws 4 lunges towards Ellen. They land the plane in the water, and of course now the shark wants to take a bite of Michael Caine because, I don't know, maybe he saw the swarm. But somehow Michael Caine survives and gets on the boat. Just kind of no explanation as to what happened. He's just okay. He got away. Jake and Mike come up with some sort of device that's going to drive the shark crazy by rigging up a flashlight with some other crap. And Jake, acting like a predictably disposable side character, goes out onto the bow of the ship and tries to stick this thing into the shark's mouth. And he succeeds at doing it, but he also manages to fall right into the shark's mouth. By the way, during this sequence and at many other points in the movie, the shark is roaring like a lion and pretty much standing on the water. Anyways, Mike starts triggering the device which causes Jaws 4 to go crazy and again start roaring like a lion. Meanwhile, Ellen is having flashbacks of things that she never even saw. So after driving the shark completely nuts with this device, Jaws 4 finally does his standing on water routine long enough for Ellen to crash the boat into him, which causes him to explode and somehow the whole boat sinks. Hey, wait a minute, that couldn't be the exact same footage from the original film, could, oh wait, yeah, actually it is. Oh yeah, and Jake is alive too, but not just alive. He's well enough to start making wisecracks about the whole situation, just when you thought this couldn't get any more ridiculous. And that's it, I guess the war between the Brody family and the Jaws family is finally over. So that's Jaws the Revenge, for all of you who have been requesting it, over and over again. Part of my two video series I like to call Michael Caine versus the Animal Kingdom. Trust me, you'll get it when you see my next bad movie review. Also, I think part of the reason why this movie was so terrible, not an excuse, just an explanation, is that it was completed in nine months, which is an extremely short amount of time. I mean, we're talking about the whole thing in nine months. Pre-production, production, and post. The funny thing is that after seeing this movie twice, once as a kid and once now to do this review, I'm actually still afraid of sharks. The original Jaws was that impactful on me and I don't think that fear is ever gonna go away. Even when I'm swimming in my parents' pool, I still have that crazy thought of, what if I turned around right now and there was just this giant shark right in front of me? I know you guys think I'm crazy, but I'm serious. It's just like in Thunderball where they throw that guy into the pool 
but the pool has a trap door to a secret compartment that's full of sharks, and then the sharks come through the trap door and then they eat them. Yeah. But then again, why would my parents do that to me in the first place? I don't know, it sounds like an idea for a bad movie. With a twist at the end? Dear Mr. Shyamalan. Hey mom. Hey Mark. How are you? I'm good. Good. Um, I'm just wondering, does the pool have any secret compartments with sharks in them? What? What are you talking about? Well, I don't know, mom. Why don't you tell me? Mom? My mom just hang up on me?